bring them back a little bit further, still have them shining fairly upright. But the reason being is because if I can splash a little bit of light and cast some shadows and still light up the brickwork, especially up top, um, then that's something I would want to do. If it, if you light these three up and it still seems too dark back here, then what I would do is I'd probably put one up light uh, in this middle section close to the house that um, really just highlights the, uh, the stonework back here. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Jamie, thanks uh, yeah, so much for sending in your pictures here. Um, I will show you a couple ideas, a couple different lights and stuff uh, definitely to use. Um, there might be some customization in there too that we can definitely help you with. Um, for a few of the lights, I think a lot of the stuff you'll find on here. Um, but there is a couple things that I think you may want to do a little bit extra because um, this is like the ideal home for landscape lighting. I mean, I, I wish uh, this was close so we could install it because there's so many cool things um, that we could do. But I'll give you those suggestions anyway, what I would do if this was something we were installing. So, I mean, first thing uh, and foremost, I would definitely light the six columns you have across the front of the house. Um, that's one of my favorite looks whenever you have that. Uh, we don't have a lot of houses with that here, but you guys do such a good job of that. Um, I, I'm assuming you're down in the States um, because, I don't know, just the houses there uh, seem to lend themselves a lot more to landscape lighting. But um, by doing that, it really makes those columns stand out. That light kind of hits the top. You get, it's almost like a soffit lighting effect, and it really makes that entryway so welcoming and so inviting. So that would be the first thing I do. Usually what I use is I just use a standard up light like these. I, I like using these um, because I can play with the angle a little bit more. Some people will use like in-ground lights like this, but I like using these because really it's only the top half that sticks out and you're not going to see that down here anyway. Um, you're really just going to see the lighting effect and you only need it starting up here. So I would have six of those. You know, you're probably, you know, 12 to 18 inches back and you want that shining more upright to get that effect like I just showed you in that picture. So six, six of those across the front for sure. Um, the other thing I would do that I think a lot of people uh, will miss out on is kind of these second story dormers and highlighting those. I think that can really, really make um, any landscape lighting project really stand out. Again, uh, pretty simple to do. What we use is we use these gutter mounts. Um, they fit right in the gutter, screw to the side. The fixture screws right into there. All our connections are waterproof, so you can run them right in the gutter. And typically what I'll do in a uh, scenario like this is wherever there's like a downspot, I'll either run my wire you know, directly inside or behind it. Then I just run it across the gutter, mount my three up lights. And again, I would just use a standard up lights a perfect light for that i like the black finish in that too because it kind of blends in with the roof um, not that anybody really notices it you're the only one who will notice it it's there um, but you have three of those uh, and with any up light the real key is having it pointed more upright than you actually think so many people will um, shine them at the house or at the window or bring it back and shine it at the pillars um, but really what you're trying to do is just uh, shoot that upright so you get a softer effect and it really highlights that area without throwing too much uh, light inside that window. So I would definitely have three of those up there. And then, you know, if you've watched a lot of the other videos, you know I talk a lot about, um, you know, lighting the brickwork and all that kind of stuff. The nice thing is you have um, kind of like perfectly placed uh, landscape features that I think you could really light the landscape features. Um, and I don't know if you'd have to put nearly as much of the lighting on the house. So for example, I would probably try and get an up light on this corner tree here um, that kind of grazes this tree as well as it's gonna create some light onto the front of the house here. Um, same thing, I would try and get three up lights on these three trees here. The only thing is this one, you might wanna bring back a little bit more and have it shining still fairly upright, but, and actually on all three of these, these ones I would almost, bring them back a little bit further, still have them shining fairly upright. But the reason being is because if I can splash a little bit of light and cast some shadows and still light up the brickwork, especially up top, um, then that's something I would want to do. If it, 
if you light these three up and it still seems too dark back here, then what I would do is I'd probably put one up light uh, in this middle section close to the house that um, really just highlights the uh, the stonework back here. It'll make these pop a little bit more, especially in the winter time when there's not as much foliage on them, they'll kind of be um, silhouetted against the backlit brick. So that's probably what I would do over there. Um, I'll get back to the garage in a second. On this side, I would probably do the same kind of thing. Um, these look, this looks like it's pretty far out. So kind of the, the same idea. I would definitely have an up light on here. I don't think you're going to get anything back on this house. Um, so it just really depends how dark this area is. If these little pockets, uh, if this was a little bit dark, um, just to balance out, luckily you have a tree on this side, so you can kind of throw that up light in here. But what I might do is I might just throw even just a wash light because you don't have an actual tree there to highlight. So you don't want it to be too bright on the wall in that section. You just don't want to have a big dark spot. So that's where a wash light would be super handy to kind of get in this corner, kind of have it highlighting these bushes a little bit. Um, again, uh, creating the shadows against that back wall, hiding that light from the window. So it's not shining in the window. Um, and it just kind of fills a little dark hole in there. Then um, you've got these big beautiful trees in the front i mean i would definitely try and get some up lights on those um it's really a big trees like this i like to put some extra focus on and have maybe two of them one on each side that's kind of shining up into the canopy um, depending how thick this is around you might have to put that light on a bit of a riser um, so you can get a six a 12 probably like a 12 inch riser so that up light is just sticking up uh, just above the the shrubs here so that light is really getting um, so it's getting past there, but if there's lots of room back here um, and or you trim it a fair bit Then just having two up lights would be a really good way to light that the only thing I would say is when you get to trees that size You probably want to use something a little bit uh, brighter than the standard four watt ones that uh, Four watt LED lamps that come in here and I would probably upgrade those to a 50 watt equivalent um, Which is about a six watt LED lamp and it's going to do a better job of pushing that light up into those trees. Same thing with, um, I think with the three trees you have here in this one, I would also use a slightly brighter lamp. That's where I would probably upgrade to the uh, 35 watt equivalent. Just a little bit brighter. Um, it's going to do a better job of pushing that light up into the canopy. And especially if you're going to try and backsplash the house a little bit, that extra light um, will definitely, uh, definitely help with that. And then the other thing you could do if this was a project that I was doing, I would definitely want to take advantage of creating some of the shadowing. Um, we call it the moonlight effect where I'm actually mounting a couple of those up lights kind of up in here, just above one or two of the branches. So they're shining down um, and creating this moonlighting effect down on the ground. It's by far my favorite thing to do. Um, it does a really nice job of just highlighting the yard, especially over on, on this tree here where you kind of have the driveway area. Uh, I think if you could definitely get one of those on here, maybe even two, a lot of times if the driveway area is kind of a area I want to feature, I might have like two on this side that kind of shine through some of those branches and create that nice moonlighting pattern down on the driveway. Um, and then maybe one more on the other side for kind of some tips on how to do that. If you just go to YouTube, search, uh, lighting doctor, uh, tree down lighting uh, moonlighting uh, different things like that there's probably at least a half a dozen if not a dozen videos kind of showing you how we do that um, with a special tree mount that we have um, some different wire connections and that that we have so you can kind of help hide the wire um, all kinds of different things like that but most of the stuff you're going to find in our videos you're going to find uh, on the website here like the tree mount um, some of the shrink wrap connectors uh, the only thing that's not on here is some of the zip ties I talk about um, but again we can help kind of customize some of that stuff and then lastly on the garage um, you know ideally I, I would like to have some lights here I think um, definitely on this side this is where an area where I would probably try and wash the garage with a couple up lights where maybe I have like three up lights on both sides of the window so it kind of lends itself um, some light and highlights the brickwork a little bit that you have here and then what I might do is I might try and look at mounting some lights up here and I'll just kind of show you an example of that again um, you know just using a light like this uh, again just a you know a standard accent light uh, like I've showed you would just have to work on a different mounting bracket and have that kind of shining down on the columns um, so what I would do and to make it easy because this is brick what I would probably do is you could even probably just run the wire up the soffit and then mount the uh, 
mount the lights here, you know, kind of here, 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 and here. Um, typically, I'd probably just mount them in the two middle columns here for a balance, but because you have this nice kind of ivy and stuff growing on the garage, I think it'd be cool to highlight. Um, all the threads on these are, um, they're a half inch male thread, and you can't see it in this picture, um, but on the bottom of here is a half inch male thread. So usually, um, we'll just get any, you can go to the electrical uh, aisle at Home Depot and they literally have a bunch of different um, you know junction boxes fittings and stuff for lights that come with a half inch female thread that you can just basically screw to the top of the soffit and have those shining down and again the, the reason I like using a directional light is because then I can kind of aim that light uh, at whatever is going to look best and as that ivy grows you know at first it might look better if you shine it a little bit more along the brickwork but as the ivy and stuff fills in and sorry i'm just calling it ivy because that's what we kind of have that grows out in some of the coastal areas out here um but then as that ivy grows and if you have it shining right at it, it might be too much of a hot spot so you might point that light out a little bit further so it's just kind of grazing that but um that's kind of what i would do in that area so jamie i know this is a longer video um we're happy to help customize something maybe just let me know what kind of ideas you like based on that um, and we can definitely go from there. Uh, the exact size of the property, I mean, I'm just trying to see where the garage is, which uh, I'm not 100% sure where the garage is. So you might have a separate transformer on that one. Um, but then on the front of the house, I would probably suggest using a bit of a larger transformer. I would probably go with more of a 300 watt transformer. Not that this one couldn't handle those lights, but it'll give you the option to upgrade and add things. Um, which I can almost ensure that you'll probably want to do, you know, one of the things sometimes that we'll do is on an area like this is kind of in between where I have those columns lit. I'll have like a path and garden light in here, another one in the middle here, over here and over here. And it creates a nice balance of up lighting, uh, the columns and then some down lighting down below, uh, as well as some other areas where I could see you potentially wanting to add some more light. So I think a bigger transformer would be better. Um, but again, let me know how we can help and we can go from there. Thanks, Jamie. So I'll just share with you guys one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the up light. So sometimes if you have an up light like this, that's close to an area where people are going to be walking, um, it's not necessarily going to be pointing in their, in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle, we're going to use something called a hex baffle that basically just slides underneath the cap of your light and goes over the lens or sorry over the light and under the lens and snaps back on um, and then all that's going to do is just deflect the light that's being uh, maybe portrayed that way so that somebody looking down they're not going to see a light shining right up in there in your eyes so this is a great uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes Cal from the Lighting Doctor here. This is the DBRY Waterproof Landscape Lighting Connectors. These are great for long lasting, low voltage landscape lighting connections. Each one of these tubes is gel filled to help keep the water out, as well as it's got a snapping mechanism to keep your wires from pulling apart, which ensures that you're gonna have long lasting connections for all your low voltage landscape lighting. Hey guys, so I'm just rolling up to the house here and. Again, nighttime pictures never do it justice because I really wish you could see what I see here with these giant, giant cedar trees that are just very subtly lit up, cabin lit up in the background, some nice deck lighting, uh, as well as the cottage on the side um, that they're converting into, um, believe it or not, a little goat, goat ranch. Um, so the goats will have some nice light. And then we're gonna just uh, move down the driveway here, um, which is probably, my favorite area so we have a bit of a dark spot here just because of lack of trees and stuff but closer to the house and the entryway coming in is where everything really stands out and you'll see as we kind of get to our first light uh, what's cool is we were able to get this one up um, nice and high in the trees above some of the the branches and create some cool shadows here I wish we had more trees around the driveway in this area 
um, cause I would do this even more, but it really stands out, um, lights the base of the tree. As well as we have another tree lit just to the right of it here. Um, coming from this way, you don't see it as much, but coming, driving up the driveway, it really stands out. And then, um, in my opinion, the real highlight here is actually, um, from the gate coming up. Um, we've got a bunch of trees lit from down below shining up and then we've got some amazing shadowing happening here um, that really makes this front entryway stand out this is why i love the down lighting effect you can see we can see all the shadows of the trees um, and just some really really cool effects and not only that but now as you drive up to the gate um, it really stands out here and we'll Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Insta light, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback. Have a great day.